Halleluja. This worshiping time and worshiping place is where God led us to God led us today. Um, with today's given passage, I want to deliver a message titled The Towel of Babel, the Secular Symbol of Its Glory. Um, today's message is the continuation of the 40 day special morning prayer service, um, a 14th of the Kingdom of God series. I would like to continuously deliver the message that connects to all the series that we've been um, following. Our true faith of Christianity is God-centered faith. God-centered faith is really important. It means that our faith, our spiritual life is revolved around God. God's full control and God's reign is what we want to obey and what we want to need in our lives. So God's word must be the center of our lives and control our life. This kind of faith is what God pleases the most. So God wants to want us to be the path of blessing through his promise, through his word, and he will bless those who follow this, who those who obey his words. Hallelujah. And um contrary to this, there is another faith of faith and, and um, concept um, that is from Satan, that is from devil, which is humanism. That human-centered belief, human-centered human faith, that is human being the center of their life and being the king trying to control their life. So Satan always uses this and tells us and encourages us to be the king of our lives, to control our life. You have to be the king. You have to take control. You have to be strengthened by your own self. You have to use all your knowledge and wisdom and you have to be at the top of everyone and you have to be the only authority. Also, it whispers that the world can be yours. It also says you can do that and, and it de everything depends on how you feel, how you decide and if you don't do that you'll become loser and Satan also even used the positive thinking all the psychology and everything that he can use and tells us to make our own kingdom that is what Satan is encouraging you to worship Satan. That is humanism. Friends, if there is no God and, and you still have power, that is the culture of kind. And humans being the center of our belief and our faith and and our our life we have to distinguish if it's we're living the human center life or God center life and this everything 
comparison between human center life and and God center life, we can see the result of、um, the difference, the comparison in the Bible as well. It all started from Adam and Eve when the the world was first created. But human centered is the evil, and God centered God centered life is the good, and there's always fight between those two belief. And I wish and pray that we can distinguish that, and be able to turn our lives to God centered life. So there's a question. So this humanism and the culture of Cain wasn't this all wiped away because of Noah's flood? No, it wasn't. After a few few years, after not not so later, the the sin again rose, and the symbol of it is the. Tower of Babel, and the background of this Tower of Babel, there is the culture that we have to understand. We have to understand what's the what's there in the background and the context of the Tower of Babel, and we'll be able to understand the whole picture and learn from it. The story behind the Tower of Babel was the culture of Nimrod, who who passed down, who who adopted the culture of Cain. What does this mean? Nimrod is the、uh, name of a person. So there were three sons of Noah: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the Bible tells that Shem and Ham was blessed, but the other son didn't get the blessing. So, so Ham, so Shem and Japheth were blessed, but Ham didn't get the blessing. So this Nimrod was in the genealogy of Ham. And if we see Genesis chapter ten, it talks about and be and. Chapter eleven. It talks about Shem and genealogy of of Noah. It talks about all the genealogy after Noah, and that's the background. And we want to more specifically focus on Nimrod. So. There was a person whose name was Lamech, and when Lamech is is mentioned in the Bible, it highlights on him, and through this Lamech, this person,、um, this. All the civilization was flourished, and also it goes down. And then there is there comes Nimrod, and then again it spot spotlights on this、um, Nimrod, this person, and then it continues to focus on who this Nimrod was. And this character of Nimrod is. Actually, a very important person that we need to know, and he is in the center 
of the background of the Tower of Babel. Maybe we can go back to the passage, Genesis chapter 10. Um, let's look at uh, um, Genesis chapter 10, verse 8 to 12. Let's read together. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man, he says. And then he continues. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. And beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erek, Akkad, Kalneh, in the land of Shinar. From that land he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehobo, Kala, and Risen between Nineveh and Kala. This is the great city. So this passage talks about spotlight. What Nimrod has done. There is a problem with the meaning of Nimrod. He, his name means the opponent. If you see in the Bible, it says, before the Lord. Verse 9, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. It says, Nimrod was the be before the Lord. It's not a positive, um, positive verse. It means it it describes how he was being um, being the rebel, being opposed to God, in front of God. And his power was really great. He had great strength, and there were a lot of a um, lot of children of Noah but if we see in the Bible on verse in verse 8 it says he was the first on earth to be a mighty man he was the first one he's not one of everyone he was the first mighty man this describes and we can see from it how strong this person how mighty he was and it also says that he was a mighty hunter. You know, back in the days, back in this time, hunter was the greatest position. And, and he, hunters do not have the fear of life and death. And this Rimnod didn't have fear at all, even in front of God. And everyone in, in front of Rim, Nimrod was scared and Nimrod was a legendary and even here it says even in the Bible the story of Nimrod was always passed down in, in verse 9 says therefore it is said with a quotation like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Everyone was speaking about Nimrod. And people, their parents will even tell their children, you could become strong like Nimrod. So I went to Philippines for a um, mission, mission trip a um, long time ago. And I played basketball because I'm um, kind of good with playing basketball. And if we, we make a goal, we make the score, then um, other Philippine, Filipinos will say, Shin Pa, which is a legendary um, basketball player in Philippines. And if, if we change that, the, con, the culture, if we do a, a we make a score, um, playing basketball, people will say, oh, you're like Michael, Michael Jordan. It's just like that. It's, it's, um, Nimrod was that kind of legendary hunter that everyone talks about. You can be like Nimrod. You're like Nimrod. 
he wasn't like just a very strong person within his own town, but he was mighty and he expands. If we say it in our context today, he was a global entrepreneur. He conquers, he, he influences everywhere. He goes, beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erek, Akkad, Kalne, and so on. Nineveh, Assyria. Politically, and his power, it was more than we can imagine. Even if we combine all the great entrepreneurs of Korea, like the chairman of Hyundai, Samsung, even if we combine everyone, he, they wouldn't be able to compare to Nimrod. He didn't say there is no God. Nimrod was a person who said, oh yeah, there is God, but I don't need God because I'm so powerful. I believe myself. I trust myself. His thoughts, his influence, all his posture, everything was very cool in our language. And everyone who see Nimrod admired him. I want to be successful as him. I want to become like Nimrod. I want to be like him. So the idea that was given was, oh, if you depend on God, that means you're weak. You're not as strong as Nimrod. Believe and trusting the Lord is just like drug. It's like opium. You depend on it. You, you're so weak because you cannot do it yourself. That's why you're, you're depending on God. We have to use our strength and make utopia. But you believers, you're so weak that you only look for Christ. You only look for God. That That is, you're having a, a weak life. You're not strong enough. So that was the culture of Nimrod. And also, if we see in the Bible today, it says they had one language together. So they were very strong together and made alliance. Everyone who had the shared understanding and admired Nimrod and wanted to follow Nimrod, and they wanted to be the opponent and and stand against God and they had the same idea together and and with one language they made a rally to make the great Tao or Babel and if we combine to if we make a line together we can avoid God's judgment. We can avoid all the judgment like the flood of Noah. We can make the great towel. So let's let's build this great towel and be away from God. This is a symbol, the meaning of symbol of Tower of Babel. What do you think is behind this, this idea? Maybe you can remember the serpent in the Garden of Eden where the serpent whispered to Adam and Eve saying, don't depend on God, 
you can have the wisdom, you can be the king, and you can be the god. This, this father of of lie. This same evil is talking to the people of um, um, this 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 context today that we are listening to, and we want to actually focus on very one very core message today. What is the lesson that we can learn? That is, our human secular vision and dreams and goals are in vain, and will surely fall apart. Under God's reign, under God's control, everything will fall. That is one thing that we want to focus on today. God's kingdom is not ours. This God's kingdom and the will of God is something that God gives to us. Everything comes from God. So, if we're under kingdom of God, if we obey to God. We are 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 under God's promise, and that is the utmost valuable life that we can have, and that's glory, that's a blessing, and that is happiness and glory. Hallelujah. However, everything else that that excludes God, we may that may seem like. It's successful. It's a very luxurious, but the end of it without God is in vain. The glory we can take in this world, it just completely goes in vain because once we die, everything vanishes. Everything disappears. You can become professional and be on top of the field. You can you can do that. You can you can be wise. You can you can earn much money even without God. It's because we were created in the image of God. Even if we don't include God. You can be professional, and if you work hard and put all your effort, if you have passion, of course you can become something. You can become someone. God gives everyone wisdom and knowledge. However, if there is no God, that is humanism. In Psalm one hundred twenty-seven, I shared this a few days ago. It says it says like this. It goes like this: Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build in labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for He gives to His beloved sleep. It says in vain, in vain, in vain three times. What do you think? What do you consider the most important in your life? It's family. Your your wife, your husband, your children. It says here you may wake up early and and sleep late. You you work hard for your family. And if, but God, unless God build the house, if He doesn't control your life, the end is only going to fall. It will only be in vain. 
no matter how influential we are in the society, no matter how much you watch over the city and stays awake, it's all in vain. So with the same understanding, we have to remember that we shouldn't be fooled by the culture of Nimrod. Let's read today's, today's passage again. From verse 2. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen and mortal. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower that with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, least, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. So they built the tower. It says they wanted to build a tower that reaches the heaven. Verse 3, it says, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen and mortal. Before this, it was the, the mud that they usually use for the construction. So it means that they have developed from the mud, using the mud, but they developed, they're civilized, and they're using stone, bitumen, and mortal, which can actually hold the walls hold the bricks so strong that it could actually build more and more on the top and it will make everything very strong and they're so happy they're so pleased they could see themselves that this was actually building so well and they were they were talk, talking to each other hey this can actually work Hey, I think we can actually build this tower all the way up to heaven. They were praising each other. And in the center of it, there's humanism. Human-centered. They're being opposed to God. And actually, if we hear from a lot of archaeologists, then it, 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 um, they have this theory how in the, every brick of Babel, they, they, pay, they, they engraved their own names. That's um, one of the um, explanations that archaeologists say. So this mindset was the center of Nimrod. And here it also said, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole, whole earth. So they were building ally to themselves to be against God's judgment. So that was their mindset, their attitude of life. Friends, if we see our culture today, We can also see the Nimrod, uh, Nimrod culture in our today's culture as well. And if you have that mindset, if you have that culture in your heart as well, 
we have to all repent and turn back to God. That's, that's all the culture we experience today. We're not saying there is no God. We're saying, oh yeah, there is God, but we don't need God. We have all the great technology, all the science, and, and wisdom, and all the invention. We all have it, and this will continue. And if someone invents something new, which is great, they will make the inventor a superstar. We will make that person as a god. And at the end, we know that with this mindset, um, there will be no utopia. There will be only fall and destruction. Nobel um, invented dynamite. With this dynamite, this was wonderful because in order for um, people to, to mine, um, a lot of workers have to use the shovel and just keep digging the ground. But with this dynamite, just one dynamite could make a great work instead of thousands of workers. You know, Einstein, he, he made a great foundation of nuclear. This is a wonderful invention. However, depending on who uses this nuclear, it really ends being used in an evil way or it can be used in a good way. If this power, if this this explosion, this nuclear is used by someone who is like Hitler, it will destroy everything. Holocaust, Jewish, Poland. Even you can you can um, see you can remember from all the tragedy that happened through the hands of Hitler. In the land of Hiroshima, we all saw what the nuclear bomb did, what, what it brought to the land of Hiroshima. So many people were sacrificed. And, but all of us, we want to be powerful. We want to invent something that's even more powerful. We want to create something that's even more powerful, even more destructive. And what do you think is the result of this? We don't have much time until the end of the um, judgment, until the day of judgment. Bible clearly says that God will bring judgment to those who are in, in the culture, who are in the culture of Nimrod, if they do not obey God, if they're not under God's reign and control, and if they're not under God, they will be judged. All the civilization, it may bring better, seemingly better future, and it may build the great towel of Babel. 
the result is just clear to see. Everything without God, it will be only used for the evil. It will only be used to be a part away from God. And we're all exposed to this. And we have to remember. So this is not only what the Bible is talking about, um, the Tower of Babel, but this continually speaks about um, how we are. The Babylon was great city, great place, but it was destroyed by, by Persia and also Greek was destroyed. Everyone thought it was the strongest city, but um, it, dis it got destroyed and Rome as well. The, Qin, Qin Dynasty too. It has the gray wall. Did it last forever? No. Napoleon, Hitler, communism, the Western culture, all the high technology, everything, everything falls. Everything that wants to become God, everyone, every country that is against God's control, if God strikes them, it falls down. So God's word is the only ultimate strength and only strength there's nothing else but God's kingdom. There's nothing else but the gospel. So Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, he didn't talk about anything else but the kingdom of God. He only preached that for 40 days after his resurrection. Everything falls, but the kingdom of God is the only thing that's everlasting. And God's kingdom is already within us. It's God controlling us, God's reign over us. And one day, it will be completed through the church. And that will be the end of the world. And we, at at that point, we will be called as kings, as God's children. And my only hope and pray is that all of us, all the church members of NIB, NIPC, could get rid of all the Nimrod culture, but to focus and desire and admire the kingdom of God and have the kingdom of God really expand in this earth together as a church. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for today's uh, message of um, the background of the culture of Nimrod. Lord, we were able to listen to to your word Lord even back then and even now this Satan is controlling our life giving us wrong concept and wrong thoughts in our mind wrong idea but Lord and we are being shaken even we're believers we sometimes are shaken but Lord please protect us and let us fully be obedient and and attentive to your word so that we can be obedient and and be
pour in spirit so that we can continuously follow your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise for the singing of the hymn together. Father God, you are deeper than the ocean and, and you're higher than the heaven and your love also is like that and you show this through Jesus Christ. But Lord, please led us to be turned away from the culture of Nimrod but to be submerged under your love and grace and mercy and let us all become your children of God and be living as children of God throughout the, the whole week and Lord today uh, we want to pray especially for the English ministry. Let us keep praying the whole day for um, English ministry. Especially we want to lift up Pastor Paul Kim as he is leading the English ministry. Lord, give him wisdom, all the wisdom he needs. And remember every member and let them heal and spread the gospel um, your word and influence the whole world Lord also we want to pray that you send your your servant to English ministry as well May the grace of Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. 
who want to be separated from the culture of Nimrod and, and to fight against the evil culture to all of us who want to obey you and follow you and expand your kingdom. May this be true to everyone who is here today and everyone who is worshiping you online and offline from now to eternity. Amen.